Deputy Colin Cleveland, I'll save seven minutes. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, it's quite obvious this morning from the contributions from the backbencher from government that the uh, future for Irish water is not good. Uh, one could argue that today Irish water is dead. And anybody that's in denial about that as a fact, uh, let me repeat it again. Judging by the contributions and the participation uh, of people who prevented a debate uh, this time last year on this critically important subject, Irish water is dead. A Price Cooper House report in 2011, commissioned by this government, explicitly advised the government not to proceed with the model it has gone ahead with. And the government ignored the advice to set up Irish water uh, and hand it over to Board Gosh. Uh, and that, the rationale behind uh, the decision to proceed with Irish uh, 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 water shifting to Board Gosh was to use its expertise uh, and internal uh, technical supports. And that raises the question. Why have we spent hundreds of millions of scarce taxpayers' resources on outsourcing uh, the uh, expertise that the government itself claimed was in existence in, in Irish water? Now, you've consistently uh, been warned about this situation since 2011. And what we have today is a quango. Uh, you have a situation where there is a blackening of information, where freedom of information, parliamentary questions have been denied to the opposition of this House. And the oral question, you have resisted. I find this amusing that backbenchers in this House talk about the priority to secure a TD's helpline. What we've seen here is the stripping of a critically important resource from local democracy in this country. And where we had an accountable local authority, where an organisation was there to provide questions, uh, answers and opportunities to locally elected people, we've seen that resource uh, stripped away uh, from Irish society. Now, Minister, you cannot argue to this House that Irish water is accountable. You cannot say that the execu its executive is here to answer questions democratically to the Irish people. They might attend to a select group in the corridors of power to some Fine Gael or Labour Party backbenchers internally in, in committees uh, uh, where powerful people will sit around and decide how this is going to work. But what we need is a situation where we have full transparency from Irish Water at our Arachnus Committee. Now, given the manner in which government parties have sought to cover up the inner workings uh, of this arrangement, I have to argue uh, to you, Minister, that you should now take uh, an example uh, from uh, other utilities across contemporary societies where we have seen utilities such as being successfully uh, uh, invested in, particularly across the water. You failed to do so. Minister, Irish Water will reach a whole time equivalent of around 700 strong staff uh, combined with an additional 400 personnel in their call centres when it's fully complete. Now, this does not include those people working on the ground, that has been outlined by Deputy Troy, who are in our local authorities. You, you've obviously consented to the heavily, heavily engagement of expensive consultants. You stand over an 85 million euro expenditure uh, by consultants as of from April of this year. And that is a significant cost to the Exchequer. Minister, a significant number of, of those staff that have been transferred from the local authority have left their pension liability with the local authority. And I, I, I don't know the rationale for that, apart from, as has Deputy, Deputy Keller has outlined, it appears to the public that you are fattening the calf, slimming it down and getting it ready for privatisation. Now, there are several points of concern uh, around many of the tender tendering processes that were raised at the original debate when this was being rammed through the House, and they've never been answered. Uh, and that's why, that's why Minister O'Dowd, who has come out publicly and said that he's not satisfied, does not believe in the workings of Irish Water, and he's raised many questions that need and have to be answered by this government. At least he, after his demotion, has done some service to the people of this country by telling the truth. Irish water is finished, it is dead. Now Irish water staff, part of this enormous quango, have been placed on top of a structure that is more expensive and is a hybrid of a quango that we've never seen before in this country. And this body, which has been rendered unaccountable to this house, apart from down the corridors with select committees in Fianna Gael and Labour, but not accountable to the people of this country. We have consistently warned you about this concern. Minister, under the parent company that has been recently uh, renamed Ervia, 
700 staff are entitled to performance-related pay. I want to acknowledge the commitment of RTE. Last week, this week, Krogan, which revealed that staff who were listed officially as needing improvement by the superiors would gain a bonus of 19 per cent. How difficult is it, that minister, for people out there who are struggling in society to have that information put in front of them, that all they have to do to secure a 19 per cent bonus is to be mediocre, to be adequate? It's an insult, manager. Minister, and it's an injury to those people in society who are struggling every day to get through the day to have this imposed on them. One person said to me this week, Minister, and I quote, it's not the lies that bother me, it's the insult to my intelligence. Minister, you've lost the middle ground on this. The public don't support it. You do not have the support of the Irish people on this project. And we've seen it this week, Minister Harris had indicated that the board would have to change. Uh, and we could see that the media frenzy and the words and the language being ramped up against John Tierney. But you haven't done the real U-turn here. You haven't had the humility to recognise that the public don't support this. You have to have the humility to recognise that this is a mistake. People out there are in fear. And they're in fear of the spiralling prospect of the cost. They cannot shoulder the weight of the cost of this. This is a quangle. This is a mess. And at least you should have had the humility to come into this House and acknowledge that. The absence of the backbenchers here this morning demonstrates that. You don't have the support of government backbenchers. They will be whipped in here today to go through the motions. The Irish people do not support Irish water. You do not have the support of the middle ground. You should know that after the local elections and the recent by-elections. The humility and arrogance of this government not to recognise that this is a source of great concern for ordinary Irish people. You have to have the decency to come in here and put a halt to it. Not just ramping up negative back briefing against the executives of Irish Water. Be man and woman enough to come in here and say, enough is enough. Stop this. Put an end to it. Put an end to the fear that people have about struggling to get food on the table every day. The cost of this is unacceptable. It is a quangle, and it's hurting and injuring society. You could have had an opportunity to do the right thing here. You failed to see. You failed to see or recognise that.